Hello, it's Monday, February 7th. It looks like an absolutely gorgeous day outside. And uh, getting back on the solar panels again. I've got uh, all these pieces of hinge cut up and pre-drilled for installation. This is for the inboard edges of the solar panels. Uh, ran a little bit short on this, uh, kind of frustrating. Um, I cut a sample piece of this stuff for my test um, little piece I had with the hinges and brackets on both ends of the piece of wood, if you can recall me showing you that a while back. Anyway, the fact that I cut that little piece off is why I ended up being short. And uh, yeah, it kind of ticked me off a little bit. But anyway, on the uh, forward edge, this, this hinge is not gonna go obviously continuous along the whole edge of the solar panel like the outboard hinges have. And um, they're really not gonna be acting much like hinges at all um, to tilt the panels. This is just to compensate for the angular connection between the roof and the panel. So I don't have to get custom made brackets and try to get things to align up and whatnot. So the forward edge of the forwardmost solar panel is going to have this long section to it. Uh, this is 23 inches long. And then towards the back, it's going to have the 12 inch long piece. All right. And then the second from the front panel, which has a three foot gap between the forward panel and the center panel, it also will have the long piece in the front and then the 12 inch piece in the rear. And then the rearmost solar panel, which goes adjacent to the middle one, it's only going to get four of these. And the reason for all that is since I ran short on this, I didn't want to spend the money to buy another hinge and wait for it to get delivered and pay for the shipping. Um, I the, the panels that are at the forward edge of the wind are the ones that are getting the longer piece of this um, actually in a way I, I'm not I didn't under order this stuff um, I had originally planned on using just a one foot section in the front and a one foot section in the rear along the edge um, it's only that I had really a little bit extra length here and decided to go the extra mile so to speak and add some extra strength to the forward edges of the panels that are going to be at the brunt of the uh, the wind. All right, I was showing this a little earlier. Uh, these are my favorite furniture foot slides. Uh, I think both Home Depot and Lowe's have these things. They uh, they really do a great job. They're uh, rubber on the on the part that goes onto the furniture. There's a metal washer on the inside, so it's got some strength to it. This is like a hard nylon surface to rub on the floor, and they come with screws, not nails. So you can just take the screw out and replace it if it ever goes bad. And I've never had one ever go bad anyway. So I just put these on a chair inside the bus um, to uh, protect the floor, hopefully. I mean, you, you kind of can't even protect the floor, right? because uh, that nice piece of plastic is nice and smooth and clean and all that. But once you introduce some sand on the floor, you're grinding the floor anyway, no matter what. All right, so let's get started on this. I got the game plan. We're gonna install these on the solar panels that are on the roof right now, the three that are on the left side of the bus. Yeah. Hey, there's a big old black duck out there. And um, in order to do that, I'm going to have to tilt them up so I can have access. And on the forward edge of the very front one and the center one, I'm going to have to drill a hole in the corner of the panel. It's this forward hole right here. Let me show you where that goes. Okay, I don't have the actual hinge that's supposed to go here. This is a left hinge and this is a right panel, but uh, I can show you how it's gonna go. Actually, I can do it this way. Here, all right. 
this doesn't go here, but this gives you the idea. So there's pre-punched holes all up and down this thing. Uh, that's a hole I drilled. Uh, and these are for the installation. There's a ground screw. All right, and um, along the hinge side, I've got a piano hinge larger than this screwed in these holes. The one I drilled, this one, this one, um, I don't know, I, don't, I, don't, I think it's this one and this one. It's uh, nine screws, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think there's nine screws in each piece. So that really secures that edge really well. The lifting side, opposite side, is attached with pieces of hinge also. So I've got a screw there, a screw there, and the one I drilled here, which doesn't line up exactly with that because this piece doesn't, they're not mates. And then I'm going to have another piece of hinge right here like this. Okay, so that's on the forward leading edge and this is on the rearward edge. And I'm confident that that's plenty securement for these panels. They're very, very rigid and very strong. So I got no issues with that whatsoever. I'm actually overkilling it. Okay, I'm getting ready to go on the roof of the bus and I'm taking all the hardware for the left side. Uh, so we're gonna need 14 screws. I'm gonna bring 15 or 16 so I can drop one or two. Same with the nuts and then twice as many washers. We're gonna need the uh, Phillips on the drill driver, the impact gun, a 7 16 wrench. What else? I need to bring the drill uh, with the drill stop. Do I have that here already? Yeah, right here. This drill with the drill stop so I don't accidentally drill a hole into my solar panel. But I'm not going to use the air drill. I'm going to use a battery drill. So I have to switch that. All right. Let me... I'm going to need, uh, yeah, some bracing to tilt the panel up so I can work on it. Got to figure out how I'm going to do that. All righty, here we are looking rearward underneath the forward panel. Uh, God, I can't wait to get this stuff hooked up and see how much it actually produces. So I'm using this five gallon bucket here as a jack stand. The 12 inch piece is going to go right there. Uh, and the longer piece is going to go here. So um, it's going to use, where am I? Let me get this thing put up. I'm laying on my back here, so this is, there we go. Uh. All right, so, hold on. There we go. So there's the hole I got to drill. Yeah, it's like right in the seam um, and it's a little precarious there, but uh, with a washer that'll hold the edge of both this piece and that piece down. And hey, you know, we're going to get something out of it, right? And then we got a screw right there and another screw down there. So I'm going to put these two rear ones in and they get everything aligned and that's going to hold it straight for me here. Ah, I should have got a clamp. Dang it, I'm going to have to go back down again. Okay. All right, I don't even know what it, I can hardly see what I'm looking at here with my camera because it's so bright up here. But So I got these three installed. All right, perfectly. Putting the nut on up here is a real pain in the ass, but I got it. So this is ready. Uh, I think I'll just fold this in like that for safekeeping for now. So now we're gonna install that one on the back here. That'll be easy, that's just two nuts and two bolts. 
and then we're going to go back to the next one. This next one here is the one I was telling you. It's got the extra long piece in the front for extra strength to fight lift while I'm driving. All right, there's the rear mount on the forward panel. All right, we've got one screw here. This is gonna be facing downward and the screw going this way. So that's a shear load on that screw, which is extremely strong. And this is a shear load along this whole uh, piece. Well, not really a shear load on this piece, but the, the bending force is on its vertical, which is super strong. That's why I'm only using one screw here, but there's two in the front since it's a longer piece. So this is done. And this piece is now waiting for the rail to be installed onto the roof. And the way I'm gonna do that, uh, actually it occurred to me this morning, the easy way to do that, I'm gonna cut my length of rail. The forward end of it is gonna go up there where the beam is so I can get um, two screws in it. And the rearward end is gonna end somewhere around here. There's a beam here, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to get two screws in it on either side of the beam. So we'll stop probably right at this seam here. We'll get a screw here and then a screw every nine inches or so. And we're gonna have to figure out how we're gonna go over this mess and keep everything else aligned. Um, this is a 16th of an inch high. My angle is one eighth of an inch thick. So theoretically, I could trim a sixteenth of an inch off the back and keep everything nice and flat here. But um, we're going to hold off on that. <laughs> That's a big pain in the butt. Um, so. All right, this is the middle one. The forward hinge on the middle one. It's painfully obvious I should have installed these before I put the panels up here. Uh, that's how it's going to go on the right side. I'm definitely going to do these ahead of time. All right, so now I've got three more one foot pieces to put on. And those are very easy. There's no drilling required up here. Okay, so this is the angle piece that's going to go on the rear two panels on the inboard side. The uh, forward one is right here. Um, I've already marked that using the outboard attachment points and this one as well. I just held it up in place and I marked all the points, but I think I'm going to add an extra screw between the double. This is where the roof beams are here and here. And right now I've got two screws between. I'm thinking I'm going to put three screws in between it's like nine and an eighth inches and i guess it'd be more like six inches spacing uh, i'm going to explore that right now i got plenty of screws uh, the roof is a little bit more flexible towards the middle than it is on the outer edges where it's got the curve in it so i think it warrants having more screws to pull it together since the Gorilla construction adhesive is, you know, rather thick, um, and it'll it'll press the roof down between screws. Maybe I'll even go with more than that. Got to count up how much I have, because um, you can't really have too many screws, pretty pretty much, right? So let me uh, let me explore that right now. I've got a little more than a hundred screws thought I overbought these things, but now I'm thinking that was a very good choice. I've got a full box and a partial box. Let me uh, take a moment to calculate how many screws it will take me to do what I'm thinking, and if a hundred and whatever screws is enough. Well, we're done for the day. We got some really crappy clouds on the horizon. And I don't know, it's getting to be pretty late, so I'm going to just call it quits for the day. But I got great progress today. It seems like, I don't know why it took me all day to do that. 
seems there's something there. I don't know, but it just took longer than I thought today. So we got this piece of angle screwed and glued with Gorilla Construction adhesive the whole length. And the install went pretty uneventful. Uh, I was gonna thread the holes uh, with my thread forming tap and I forgot, but the screws went right in. I guess being above the screws and pushing straight down on it makes a difference. Uh, Cause I worked my butt off doing these over here. But uh, you can see we're in place. Um, there's the longer piece of hinge at the front edge. We're gonna have two screws in here, one here and one here. And uh, into this piece, we're gonna put a uh, riv nut or whatever you wanna call those things. Sheet metal nut, it's not a sheet metal nut. I think a rib nut is the right term for it. I've got a bunch of stainless steel rib nuts that go back there so it, so that way I don't have to put a nut on the back side to, uh, to screw the bolt to. I can just screw the bolt straight in there. Downside is they're not self-locking. Yeah, all the other fasteners I've been using here, we've been using nylon insert lock nuts on everything. Um, except for the sheet metal screws, but they're kind of glued in place anyway. Uh, so, um, gonna play hell drilling that hole because uh, it's so close to the roof. I'm gonna have to pull some slick moves there to make that happen. It's the next 64th size bigger from a 3 8 whatever that comes to, which is a pretty hefty drill bit. So we're gonna pre-drill through there with quarter inch. So we'll be dead on with the hole in the hinge. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased. I'm also very glad I only use sections of hinge here so that the panels can ventilate. And this is the higher side of the panel. So if there's no wind at all, we'll get a little bit of flow coming out here just due to the fact that heat's gonna rise out of there. Um, very happy, very happy with how it turned out. And we're that high off the roof, which uh, I think at the lowest point, maybe 9 sixteenths of an inch. And uh, it's really solid. I'm very, very pleased. There's like no concern in my mind whatsoever about strength on this. Actually, it stiffened up the roof, put in the aluminum angle. It's taken the, the oil canness out of it. And when I put the other one over here, it's gonna even add. Uh, it's gonna be uh, an interesting deal here putting these on, because I'm only gonna have like an eight inch space in the middle if I leave these down. But uh, my plan is, uh, since I've got this hinge, um, it gives me the ability to, to tip the panels up and put a, a rod between this piece and this piece to hold the, the panels up at a fixed angle. So um, I really wasn't planning on doing that. I was hoping that um, I would get enough solar without doing that. Um, but I guess what I'll do is I'll just make a full set. One, two, three, four. I really need six but uh, I need to find out what it's gonna take for me to do that. Because the hinge is gonna yield um, for the angular movement of the, the panel, but I don't have a hinge on here, so I gotta come up with something that's got an angle built into it for whatever, you know what I mean? So uh, not too excited and worried about that, but everything worked really well. Uh, down there, there's a little hatch, um, a hatch cover plate, that's where the uh, white strobe light was that came with the bus original and i had put this on there quite some time ago and the aluminum ended up going right over these three screws on that side and really close to that screw so i put a little notch in the aluminum to make sure i wouldn't have interference and uh, so uh, i just filled these things up with gorilla construction adhesive just so it wouldn't hold water 
and I goofed here. I drilled those holes to half inch diameter to give way for the, you know, screw head to come through. And I goofed and drilled this one out to half inch. So I had to use a washer on that. And thankfully I had some large area washers. Uh, gonna come back later and wipe uh, some something over these screw heads to make sure they're stainless steel screws but uh, fabulous screws by the way they really are holding very very well I'm tickled how nice they're working out I'm actually thinking about maybe putting an elastomeric paint up here I don't know one of these screws I stripped I over tightened it I don't know which one it is it might be that one right there it's got a pretty big gap on it underneath there Somehow I don't think it was that one. I think I purposely didn't tighten that one too much so it wouldn't deflect this aluminum, but I think we'll get a screwdriver and put the whammy on that. But uh, all in all, great day. Very, very excited. Wow, I just noticed something. The roof is not perfectly flat. Um, I mean, it's just a school bus, right? But let me see if I can zoom in here. You see the juncture between the two panels right there? One's higher than the other. That bugs the shit out of me. So I think what I'm going to do is I might. Right now, these panels are just resting on the hinge pin area right there it's going to get a bolt through there when it's all said and done granted it would be a lot easier to just drill the hole how they sit but i think what i might do is take the the wow out of the panels by spacing up in the right places before i drill that hole got to think about doing that because as it sits right now gravity we have you know that whole surface area of the hinge knuckles resting on the edge of that piece of aluminum that's sticking vertical there if I space that up to compensate for the wackiness up there then uh, all the weight of the panel will be sitting on just the screw so I gotta think about that it's probably better I just leave things alone but you know so next step on the agenda is bonding this rail to the roof on the forward panel that shouldn't be too bad um, and then I gotta make these rails for this side and get those things installed. I can't, actually I can't install those. That's right, I can't install these rails until I get these panels installed because I need to locate where this line is right here. And that's what the panel does for us. So, I'm not gonna finish today because I need my little woman to help me hoist the panels up on the roof. So, yeah. Hmm. Well, forgive me if I'm being redundant, but uh, here's how I'm doing the alignment. We've already got the panel installed on that side, so it's located and i'm just clamping the hinge to this to get everything to align and straighten so it's sitting on this right now on the roof so at this point i'm gonna drill the roof with all these holes these doubles are in the ribs and i've made some adjustments along the way like over here instead of getting into the rib which was right in the wrong place here. I put the screw in line with these screws more or less on that. Over there you can see the rib is a little bit to the rear. 
this area so I felt comfortable putting the two screws here and over here we're able to get into the rib that way so this should go pretty quickly I've, I know I've said that before so the hard part the hardest part about this whole thing is cleaning so I've got a sand I use sandpaper on the the bottom side of this aluminum to get all the oxide off and make it nice and clean and then wipe it really good with lacquer thinner and then on the roof of the bus I'm using isopropyl alcohol so I don't hurt the paint and I'm scrubbing with paper towels all this oxidation off of here it actually has a pretty good shine on it uh, after I've wiped it and then I do the installation So I did realize yesterday it took almost a full tube of Gorilla Construction adhesive to do that length, which that's 160, like 165 inches long. It was almost a full tube. So I'm gonna need a full tube for that piece. I have the leftovers of a tube that can do this piece. So I'm gonna be short for this piece. That means another trip to the hardware store. Oh, uh, one other thing too. Drilling these holes became a pain uh, because um, the drill hits over here. The drill chuck hits there with the, the standard number 22 or whatever drill bit it is I'm using right there. And I just happen to have one of these 12 inch long ones man i can't believe it. it just by chance it's the right size i only got like four different sizes of those long bits that i bought 30 some odd years ago from a garage sale but anyway let me get drawing that's what i get for bragging about my 12 inch long the only freaking 12 inch long drill bit that I have of that size broke off flush in the freaking hole.